Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody and well, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing well. So let, let's talk about today's tape. So I, I think today's market um, really let down a lot of traders and kind of left um, left kind of this little stank in our mouths uh, for most of us, right, throughout, throughout the day. And what I mean by that was, uh, look, th there's never any doubt which way the, the wind is blowing, okay? Um, I, I think if you guys watched uh, the weekend video, um, I talked about a potential washout, right? That the bulls needed a washout for any potential, quote unquote, uh, capitulation, uh, reversal, at least a kind of tradable multi-day bounce. The bulls needed to get a washout scenario, throw retail out the, uh, out the way, throw the baby out with the bathwater and kind of reverse. And I kept on talking about uh, on the weekend video that the last thing the bulls wanted was um, any type of strength in the morning, any type of gap up into strength. And that's exactly what we got, right? That's exactly what we got. And uh, last night, the futures, you know, the NASDAQ futures were down like 60, 70 handles. Not a lot, right? Not, not, not a lot, but at least you could at least have start the conversation of, hey, by the way, yeah, maybe we do reverse today, maybe we don't. But we knew for sure we did not want to get any type of strength, especially pre-market. And lo and behold, that's where kind of the narrative started to, to kind of uh, change form today. Uh, Pre-market, uh, everything was pretty much flat, okay? Uh, some stocks were green, some stocks were red, but there was nothing there uh, to give you a sense of, hey, this is it, this is gonna be the reversal, just because again, you don't get a reversal just on a random open uh, into strength. Again, it's very rare that you'll get a gap and go or, or green and go in any type of cell cy uh, cycle environment. So. I, I think the bulls, uh, and again, it's not their fault. Okay? Again, it's not like uh, the bulls and bears could control overnight futures cash. But the fact that we didn't gap down, didn't get that washout, didn't get that uh, washout scenario, throw the baby out with the bathwater scenario, really put the market participants in a very, very awkward hand today. Uh, and, and what I re re mean by that was, if you look at the final standings, right, and you'll see the Dow down 300. I don't care about the Dow. The S&P down a percent. Uh, and the NASDAQ down 0.6%, you're not gonna get a really good uh, sense of what today's action was, or more important, what this action wasn't. Uh, majority of the day, you saw half the technology names green, right? Tesla was green, Apple was green, uh, Coinbase was green, you know, some random names here and there, even Amazon was green, then, then the other half were red. Right, Microsoft was red, Snow was red. So it's very, very tough to get very excited about when you have a Christmas tree effect, meaning half the stocks are red, half the stocks are green. The greatest value we always get is when we our research tells us, hey, for tomorrow, let's watch this group, obviously technology space, if they confirm the downside channels, everything gets pulled up, right? It's not Microsoft is strong, Apple is, is weak, it's not Meta is strong, Google is weak, it's everything is strong or everything is weak. And today we had the Christmas tree effect, green and red, and it led to a very undesirable day. Very, very slow, methodical day, nothing really to, to even talk about. Uh, yeah, there was a couple of pivots here and there, some Tesla, there was a Tesla long, but I messed that up. Um, Tesla long, there was a, a snow long and then a snow short. Uh, but most of the day, the market was kind of dead. And what I mean by that is, again, it's kind of the old, uh, the old uh, you know, formation that, that, that I kind of talk about all the time. The stock cannot go higher if the stock doesn't take out the previous day's high, and the stock cannot go lower if it doesn't take out the previous day's low. And that's exactly what happened to us today, right? We gapped up, right? We gapped up for a little bit. We got rejected off Friday's highs. And we started going lower. So now that put us in the situation, the Christmas tree effect, have green, have red, but we didn't take out the previous day's low. And as the cues don't take out the previous day's low, probably most of the names that you're looking at are going to do the same. And that was where we ran into trouble. And the most important part is, again, it's okay, right? It's okay. Uh, you know, I still believe, and I'm always, you know, I'm always on the lookout because again, I don't want to get trapped at the bottom of the range. I'm always 
to the point of any big gap down, especially on a lengthy continuation move like we've had now. Now, you know, we've lost uh, we lost the 50 day on what the, the 13th, right? Today is what the 26th or 13 days ago, two weeks ago, we lost the subtle. So it's been kind of almost linear down with a couple of uh, blips of upside to the side. So we, we, we kind of know there's, there's weakness out there. We, we, we get it. You know, it's not something that is just you kind of woke up to say, wow, the market sucks. No, the market doesn't suck. The market's going lower. Um, and most important part is of this market's going lower. Again, we want to always stay away from the stocks that have been kind of going linear with the market, but stocks that are starting to break down. So we, that's why we talked about the names like a NET a couple of days ago, right? Names like a NET, that's just coming out of a range here, and I still like it for tomorrow. Again, you can see another case scenario that didn't take out the previous day's low. A name, for example, like Snow today lost the 50-day moving average, right? But again, you can see there's a lot of meat on this bone because it starts confirming this Bollinger Band for tomorrow. This thing has a lot of room down. But the point is, it's not down here. It hasn't been selling off for three, four, five weeks, six weeks. It's just finally starting to lose its 50-day moving average. That's one of the uh, that's one of the cases that we're still trying to find. Uh, the greatest amount of value that stocks are not they're not over overly sold or overly extended so that's why i'm looking more like names like an, uh, a snow i'm looking more like names like an net right because it just first you know first couple of days below this channel here even a name like first solar again always people are talking about well this one's the strongest stock to, it, it, everybody's everything's the strongest stock until they lose ranges right just like we talked about tesla you know, for the last week, it was strong, it was strong, it was strong until it lost its 10-day moving average. It was strong, it was strong, it was strong until it lost its 50-day moving average, right? Everything is strong until bids get pulled and nothing, you know, nothing is is spared. That's what the stock market is. It pulls everything down um, as, as a whole and, and the sum of the parts kind of don't matter. So when you look at names, for example, like for tomorrow, if we continue the selling pressure again, NET I like, right? A snow I like. And again, there's a common denominator. They're, they're first, they're finally either a day or two just below uh, their crucial channels or below the 50-day moving average, or in the case of First Solar, first close or first, yeah, well, actually, yeah, first close below the 20-day moving average. So if it starts confirming the previous day channel, which we didn't get today, we're going to start the next level of selling. But that was our problem today. We just didn't get enough value. We didn't get enough stocks that were coming out of their channels to the upside because, again, we're in a sell cycle, right? And we didn't get enough value to the downside because majority of the names did not take out the previous channels low and they were all mirroring the nasdaq 100 or the qqqs you can see here friday's low uh was 272 today's low was 273.56 we had a perfect storm of crap today right that's the best way of saying it. we had a perfect storm of crap stocks were didn't have enough range to go higher until they finally got pulled and they didn't have enough fear today or enough uh, uh aggression today to take out the previous uh day's channel which we kind of uh, see see here for ourselves here on the queues. When you look at other indexes like the IWM, IWM is weaker, right? The IWM is definitely weaker. Here's a perfect scenario that they did take out the previous day's channel and look what happens, right? Once you take out the previous day's channel, it starts a new challenge down. If you look at the Dow Jones Industrial, this is again, the lowest close, right? The lowest close we saw uh, in, in, you know, in, in a pretty, pretty long time, right? right? Going all the way back uh, into the June lows, and again, it's starting to make a new level down. So the key right now is to number one, don't get aggressive, especially to the sell side at the open, right? It's, it's, it's incredibly important to understand that if you are selling uh, into an area that is overextended because of how thin stocks are at the open, you're going to get squeezed back. It's just, it's just, it's just very, very evident. Again, I don't care how right you think you are. It's easier uh, it's easier to be wrong and solvent than the other way around. So it's very, very important to understand the dynamics. However, if we do eventually get that gap down, again, I, I still think that play is valid. Again, we can't go straight down. It's, it's, it's pretty obvious. Um, but if we do get that three, four, 500 point gap down, I think that is going to be the day that we finally get a turn and we get a move higher. Again, is it possible we never see that day? Of course not. Listen, it's, it's possible that we get, we, we, we gap down and keep going down. Again, that's what a bear market is. That's what sell cycle uh, markets are. But again, at least we have to be prepared, right? Professionally, we have to be prepared in our minds for a potential swing back to the upside. But having said that, any green open for the for the bulls is just no good, guys. Again, again, it's, it just, just write this down on a sticky pad. There's no gap and goes in a sales cycle. There's just none. Unless there's some materialistic news 
uh, coming from a geopolitical landscape, from the Fed, or something to the to the to the case of uh, a, a data read, whatever the case may be. It's very very rare you see a gap and go. That's why you're seeing so many gap ups uh, ever since this bear cycle started. Either going even going back to the last two sell cycles that we started. Uh, all the way back to down at, uh, back over here, every gap up, predominantly every gap up uh, gets stuffed into supply and we start rolling over. So hopefully for tomorrow, if we do get a flat open or a green open, yeah, let's start watching back. I mean, everything that's pretty much on our watch list for today is still on our watch list for, for tomorrow. Like look, look in the video, right? Look in the video, except for the other names we mentioned, look in the video, it's, been, it's kind of just sitting here now. It's just sitting a couple of days in a row uh, is sitting on basing out. If this thing starts losing its channel, it's going to go lower, right? And here's here's something that speaking of Tesla, right? So Tesla was green today. Don't you know? Don't say Tesla was strong. Tesla was green today. You know, stock has come back uh, from three thirteen to uh, two seventy. It, it wasn't strong today. It was just green today. Here's one thing. I, I know they have their AI event on. I believe on September thirtieth. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm a very big believer in the options market, the way they make bets. And uh, again, not that it's 100%, not that it's, uh, it, that it's set in stone, but usually when, when the options market is betting one way, okay, and they're betting one way aggressively in short-term expiration, there's usually, a, you know, there's usually a reason behind it. And if you look at the bets going into that AI event, um, going in on, on, the, on the 30th, okay, they're betting pretty aggressively. We saw a whole bunch of six, seven figure bets for the 270 weeklies. We saw some 265s, we see some 260s. Uh, and again, it's not, it has nothing to do with the event. I'm sure the company's gonna say some really cool stuff and pretty neat stuff. It's just all the dynamics of where we are in the landscape. We're in a sell cycle and every news, right? Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, it's probably going to get sold until they start reclaiming back the 50 day moving average. This is kind of like the, the, the human nature or the AI nature uh, when it comes to stock market, right? It's like, again, when, when the market is good, okay, usually like I'll give you an example, earnings reports, right? You guys remember when we went on this pretty good run, right? We, we reclaimed the 50 day moving average. We went on this month run. This was in the middle of earnings season. If you guys remember, it was a really good market because we reclaimed supply and we were going higher. So news in a weird way didn't matter. So for example, Microsoft and Google during earnings, they missed both on the top and bottom results and they both exploded higher, right? So that's kind of the flip side around when there's a sour negative connotation going on in the market and everything is being sold, no matter how good the news is, unless Elon solves the cure for blindness and stupidity, there's probably going to be a sell cycle event, right? Because if they gap up the stock into supply and the stock is already into supply, institutional money is putting their mouth with their money where their mouths are and they're making bets that this event will get sold with six and seven figure bets. Just something to keep an eye on, something to kind of take note, getting closer to the event. So if you hear your buddy talking about, hey, we should buy Tesla into the event. Yeah, uh, just go back to, I had one of my worst trades. <laughs> If you guys remember battery, you guys remember battery day, right? Battery day a couple of years ago. Yeah, okay. I was buying the dip in battery day. No good. So I, you know, I have a, I have a firsthand experience of what what selling into event uh, feels like, and I promised myself I would never do that again. So just keep something in, in mind in the back of your head as we get closer uh, to the AI event, and you start seeing and pay attention. Continue to pay attention uh, to the options market and see what's what. Other notable bets that we saw, if you guys remember a couple of uh, weeks ago, we were watching, they were betting pretty aggressively. As one of the videos we were talking about, we were like up here, they were coming for the 366. You guys remember the 366 puts, right? They were coming very, very heavy for the 366 puts, millions and millions of dollars. Well, today they started coming for the October 344s in the spies very, very aggressive, you know, five, 10, $15 million a clip, very, very aggressive. So again, nobody's talking about, even if we get a reversal and it's one or two days, nobody's talking about the bottoms. Stop worrying about the bottoms, the tops, just trade day to day, right? Trade day to day and make sure every single day that you're trading again, the market that you have, not the market that you want. Again, very slow day today, hopefully tomorrow, uh, we can get a lot better value. And that's the name of the game. It's not about the market being open. It's how much value we get when the market 
is open. All right, guys, so have a great night, everybody. Hopefully tomorrow we'll get a pretty more of a seamless session uh, as we did today. Very slow, very you know nauseating. Uh, and more important is, again, my eyelids are open, but barely. So hopefully tomorrow we have greener pastures. Guys, have a great night, everybody. I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.